How's it going, fellas? Yeah, so today we've got a sponsored live stream. I managed to find a sponsor for the stream. Longtime collaborator with the blog, AVA Music Group. They have a new Prism drum library called Urban Legends. And so we're going to have a section of this stream dedicated to checking out that new contact instrument. So we're going to do a full tour of what it is, how to use it, and then we'll try to actually write some music later on. What is new in the last Reaper update? I don't think there was anything very remarkable in that Reaper update. I should take a look again. It's, it's mostly a bug fix update. It fixes the issue with the scrolling. Action to maximize height of selected items in free item positioning mode. Show video effects processor presets in effects browser show video processors in Project Bay. Preference for file name format for recorded audios to recorded in Project MIDI items. Um, so that's basically like if you have an item and you drop it in on a track or re hit record, you record a MIDI item on a track. Let's say this is a uh, chords and this is a MIDI input. So yeah, it just gets the name of the track in the name of the items, which is the preference here for, for recording. So it should do this. I think they're still tweaking that a little bit because the numbers, I don't think it got the numbers right. It used to just say like untitled MIDI for every item. So that's an improvement. But I don't think I need to make a video about that. Happy to show this off. Um, the video processor presets. So if I go to, is that right? No, that's, that can't be right. Show video processor presets in effects browser. That doesn't sound right. They don't show presets normally for anything. I don't know. That's that seems like a a typo. Maybe not um, an effects browser, but like Project Bay. So I'll add in the video processor, and I'll go to the video controls preset. If I go to the view menu, and then Project Media Effects Bay, go to effects. I see video processor and I see the preset name and I can change the preset here if I want. I don't see where that would be where the um, effects would be list the presets would be listed in there otherwise. Auto name MIDI items saw that snap edge edits to start endpoints of non-looping but pooled MIDI items. Improved performance when removing MIDI items Fix window positions. Screen set include maximized zoomed window state for the MIDI editor. When restoring screen sets, obey preferences for opening all project or all MIDI or all track MIDI. Project tabs, double click empty area in tab list to create new tab. All right, so first of all, I need to show tabs and I'll easiest way to do that right now is to have a couple tabs there. All right, so the double click in this area here makes a new tab, which is pretty intuitive. If you didn't know, there's also this little plus here, hard to see. I always forget it's there and that brings up a menu. So I think a lot of people were expecting to see a little plus there, like in, like in Firefox, where we've got this plus on the right side. I think that's a little more intuitive and people are bugging them to, to change that, move the plus over to the other side. Um, but yeah, this double click to add a new tab, pretty useful. Something I think I forgot to show when you're rendering, uh, this window is actually resizable now, which gives you more info for, you know, all the LUFS graphs and, and whatnot. And that's pretty much it. It's a pretty small update. It wasn't worth doing a video for. But yeah, there's a couple things that kind of worth mentioning. Maybe as a short video, this, this works for that.
one thing that I worked on through the week or uh, last weekend was a couple changes to that to that synthwave project I was working on. We're not going to like really mess with this too much today. I just want to show you the update of where we're at with that project. Did I add more OTT? No, not. No, I think I trimmed it back a bit. The main thing that I did was, um, it was a few things I did. I moved most things to a submaster so that it would allow me to have like the main beat filtered in the intro um, while still allowing transition effects through, uh, which is something we wasted a ton of time on uh, in the last stream. I added in some voice samples that I had from a, an old movie called Maniac. Uh, you might recognize this, the samples, but um, these are things I sampled years years ago, 15 years ago or something like that. And I used my Minilog XD to kind of add some transition effects things in there. Other than that, I don't think I really changed too much. Um, I just gave it another hour or something to, to tweak. I noticed that all through that uh, that video, the the live stream, every time I was doing something with the drums, you could hear this like slap back uh, from the drums getting into the mic. So I'm gonna try to do it on headphones. Here we go. Yeah, so a, a nice little update uh, that started off with the wrong preset on my hardware reverb. I should probably render that at some point. Uh, if we're looking at that a little bit closer, we've got some mini log. So that's just the synth with built-in effects. And then another layer here. And this is a situation where that global sampler, having that always up here in my, my toolbar, was super helpful because I made that sound and I'm like, oh, I didn't record it, but I did record it. When the high arp comes in, it has a little flavor of Knight Rider. Yeah, probably. It's... I love that cheesy synth stuff. It's all good. That's basically it. I've got these these fun samples from Maniac. I've got the uh, Pulsar Smasher, which got a mention in the last stream, but I never ended up getting it installed. What's unique about this is that it's only all buttons in mode. So um, yeah, so it's like a heavy compression effect. <laughs> I 
I think those add a lot to the, the song. But that's all I'll show you for that one today. This stream and the subsequent edited video is sponsored by AVA Music Group. Prism Urban Legends is a contact drum engine that features 10 mix-ready hip-hop kits mixed to the highest standards. The new Prism instrument features an effects page that provides built-in drum effects processing, a groove page with 50 drum patterns to spark inspiration, and a master effects page to give your sound some extra spice. The instrument works with a free contact player and is fully NKS compatible. Additionally, they have started their spring sale, which offers 70% off their bundles, 50% off individual libraries. I have checked out the previous Prism libraries before, Prism Modern Drums and um, Retro Pop. Um, I have videos on those. And let's go over to the website. So this is the new Urban Legends instrument. It's made for contact. The Prism interface here is similar to the previous ones where you can rotate this and choose a different kick, um, hi-hat and snare um, kind of trio that generally works together. You can swap out sounds pretty easily as well. And the way that's done is a little bit new. Plus there's the all new Groove Player per channel effects and master effects. And this is also the first one that allows for multi-out. I've talked to them and they said they're going to bring these new features to the, the previous libraries as well. And this one, um, it works with Contact Player. So you don't need the full version of Contact to use this. So this just came out. It, there's the intro offer right now. There's the, the, the full sale um, linked in the description of the video. This this company is not primarily like they don't necessarily make things for musicians. They make peop things for people that create trailers and um, stock library sound effects and stock music libraries, things like that. The sounds that you get are heavily processed, mixed ready. They also add in additional features so that you can process them, make your mix, you know, optimize things for your mix. So. I, I'm going to make a new project and add in contact seven. And I'm not going to do multi out right now. Quick note on the installation. It was very simple. Open up native access. You paste in your serial number and then it does the rest. It downloads, installs it, authorizes it for you. So that was super simple. Here's the interface for Prism Urban Legends. You can drag this to uh, to change kind of the, the different kits. There's also presets here under factory. There's 10 presets, which are essentially the 10 kits pre-built. On the effects page, each instrument, each kick, snare, clap has a way to select the sample with the previous and next buttons here. You can also select from the list below. And uh, to audition them, you can click click on them directly. Um, and then you can turn on the effects and um, yeah, crank this up, try it out. There's a bunch of different reverbs. These are contact-based effects. So if you like the contact stuff, it's all there. And then in the master section, you need to turn on these effects to make them active. And you can tweak the settings, but the main interface for those is going to be here. Similar to like a Spitfire app where you've got some master controls, but you do have the full control here as well. So I'm going to go back to main preset and let's look at the file browser. So in here, we've got a bunch of different I think they said 50 um, presets. So like with contact stuff, you, you need to double click to preview that or to load it into the player and then you can preview that down below.
So they've even got some ways to manipulate the MIDI here. I just noticed this now. I didn't, uh, I played with this a little bit last night, but I totally missed this setting. Okay, so while that's playing, I'm gonna move around uh, to the next kit. Okay, so let's say we've got this kit that we like. This is the Dreams kit. Let's say we want to swap out that kick. So here's the, the Dreams kick. If I want to hear the Smack kit kick instead. Yeah, you can easily swap out just one of the, the samples for the kit using this sample browser here at the bottom. The different presets come with all the effects off. Last night I went through and made a starting point preset that has all of the effects on and in a neutral position. I'm going to suggest to them that they fix some of these things um, so that the like the transient control effect, it starts off with the attack at minus 100. And so that like kills all the attack on it once you activate it. So I suggest just putting it at zero to start with. And so here's how this one sounds. And in this one, we can go through the different uh, master effects. The sliders on the front panel, the main page, they link to either the input gain or the warmth or the mix controls in the uh, in the master section. So there's a compression, there's a tape saturation, there's a limiter, and the secret sauce, which is kind of another compressor, um, a more characterful compressor. If we want to have this multi-out, we go to this output section and then we can select from this menu um, any of the stereo outs. Contact has 64 stereo outs. So just go ahead and choose output one through eight is probably all you're going to need here. This mix knob here is, um, is actually like a stereo width control. So at straight up at 12 o'clock position, that's your uh, stereo output turned to the left for mono and turn it to the right for an exaggerated stereo uh, spread. So I mentioned the the different outputs. Um, you can just select them from there. When I loaded contact here, I did not choose the multi-out version. So what I can do is, um, well, you can see in the corner that it does have 64 outs. Only two of them are currently in use. All we need to do here is right click on the instrument name in our effects browser or uh, effects chain and then build multi-channel routing for output of selected effects it's going to ask to create all these new tracks we'll hit yes and then in here i'm just going to load up my starting point with multi-out which is really just setting those different outputs for each of the of the drums Oh, and if you're using the multi-outs, the master effects are, is not applicable. Uh, this is only applied to the main out, and all contact instruments are like that. So if there's any master effects, you lose them with the um, multi-out mode. So let's say we, we've got a, 
a MIDI pattern that you like, you can drag that in from the browser, I think. The MIDI button will let you drag that into your Reaper project. And we can grab another one. You just need to double click it. Yeah, and I'll drag that in. So now that I've got this pattern here, in Reaper's Mixer, I can now customize this mix using any effects that I want, volume, panning, all that stuff. I believe I've just got the eight outs, so I'm, I can actually delete all these unused channels. Any questions about what we've seen so far? Hopefully this has been interesting. Um, I can show you some of the other Prism libraries while we're here. So I recently did, or maybe a year or two ago already, I did a a video on the Prism Retropop library. So this is a very similar sort of thing. There's like 10 kits and, but more of like a, a synth wave or, or kind of retro themed modern pop kind of thing. And there are some built-in effects here. So you can adjust the, the reverb on the kick or the reverb on the hi-hats or the reverb and transient master and EQ on the, the snare. So everything in this one basically happens within this interface, just this one page. And the new ver the new prism has the effects page. It has the multi outs. It has the master channel effects. I do like both approaches, having everything invisible in one screen or having maximum control in separate windows. Uh, that's the prism retro pop. And um, the other prism library that I have needs to run in the contact six. So the original prism is here. Which is really just a couple like kick snare and, and, uh, and hi-hat samples, but it also comes with a big library of additional samples. And I've been using these samples a ton, like pretty much every project that I start in a synthwave style is going to start with Prism because it's just so much faster to get started with them. So you might remember my my Prism retro or synthwave track. The song that I used for like two years for the intro of my videos was made using Prism, the original Prism. I'm going to get back to answering some questions here. Joey Greenwood's. How to get your interface inputs to show up in Reaper when using Caster. I use two different interfaces. So I use a Elgato Wave XLR for my microphone, and then I use a Audio Fuse for my guitar and everything else. I don't know if you can do both in Reaper. I, I'm not sure if, if you can do everything with the one interface. OBS doesn't like having multiple interfaces and stuff, or, and it doesn't work with multi-input devices very well. So my audio fuse has, I think, 14 inputs and outputs, but it only sees like one input in OBS. So I need to go through Caster to be, to be able to assign these different channels and control them individually. I use an aggregate audio device that combines Caster. Here's my Caster layout. I've got my Elgato Wave XLR in there, uh, which I'm not monitoring, and that goes to its own channel in OBS using this function, the direct to function. This gets combined with my main audio interface, the audio fuse within audio MIDI setup for an aggregate device. And then in, in Reaper, just sees it as an aggregate device. So if I want to assign an input, I've got all these inputs, all the physical inputs on the interface, plus caster. And for track outputs, I've got all the same outputs, plus one unused channel here. I don't remember why. I, actually, I think I just put that in as a divider. Going out of, cast, out of Reaper sends to caster on this channel. So output. 1516 in Reaper becomes input three, I think, in Caster. Hopefully that makes sense. 
If I had to do this with one interface, it probably wouldn't work. I'd have to like monitor my mic through Reaper all the time to get it to go over to, to OBS. I'm not sure about that. Davi, there's, there's a lot of contact stuff that works in the free player. Not free stuff generally, unless it's coming from a very big company, but for the, the smaller companies, um, you often need the full version. And you need the full version to make your own packs, which then you can sell and that kind of pays for it itself. Um, or if you have anything that you want to edit, you can use the full version. And the um, full version will load anything from any previous version. I don't know for sure what um, which each of the, the different Prism libraries, like the minimum requirements for them. I think they're contact six or seven required. When you use the web OSC with your phone touch screen, is there a way to fix the input lag? Or is it better to use a control surface like the Behringer X-Touch one? Depends what you're doing. It's meant to be a, like a long distance remote, not a real-time controller. There's basically two delays. There's the delay from sending to Reaper and then the delay of Reaper returning the current value to the controller on the screen. OSC works pretty well. That's a lower latency than like web remote, the HTML pages that, that will work with Reaper, those definitely have a lot of latency, but they're not meant for real-time control. They're meant for like coarse, long distance adjustment when you're at the drum kit, when you're in the Foley booth, that sort of thing. Not for real-time mixing. If you want real-time mixing, X-Touch 1 for sure. That works better. Any MIDI surface, any moving fader controller that's going to be zero latency and work really well but it's not wireless x touch or control surface has no midi latency or is it affected by the buffer size and preferences i guess technically if there was a lot of plug-in delay compensation there you would notice a delay between moving a controller let's say like an eq sweep and in hearing that sound technically that's there but in general, you don't notice it. It would be far less than a like a Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connection. How do you send a MIDI program change from Reaper using a region? I'd have to think about that. Sending it through a MIDI item is probably the better way to do it. Yeah, I don't think there's any reason to use a region. I would use just have a MIDI item on the track. I mean, maybe you can jump to that item using regions, but to actually send a MIDI channel out or a midi thing out let's bring up the midi editor put your cc lane to bank program select and then you can do that from there you'll need to have some banks saved probably but you can you can send a program change there that's how i would do it i don't think you can send midi data from a marker what can I learn for music production? I know music theory, need practice, any tips? Just get started. Try to reproduce a song that you like, samples and instruments. Um, knowing music theory is a big help, but it's not really necessary. It's really just hours in front of the DAW is really what's gonna help you. Record stuff, try to make it sound good. When using MIDI effects, is it possible to filter out the input MIDI from the keyboard? but only record the output effects. Like when using scale or the trigger note also gets recorded. In that case, you might want to either set your track record mode to record output. So you would right click on the record button, go to record output MIDI, or you put your effect onto the input effects chain. So that pops up once you record on the track, you see this little in effects button, you click that, add your effects there, it replaces the input. So you could put arpeggiators, scalar, things to snap to key, all those sorts of things. Okay, let's try to make something with that. You guys know I don't make hip hop, but I'm gonna try, I guess. We'll try to make something anyways, maybe not hip hop, but it's gonna be something. Okay, so let's let's use Analog Lab 5 and a bass, 90s club bass. Maybe 
maybe? I'll just loop record. We'll try to get something that works. Speaking of quantize, let's turn on track quantizing to 30 seconds. Let's do like 90%. I don't know what to play. Nope, that's garbage. We'll keep going until it's not garbage. I think I just want count in before recording. Don't run during playback or recording. Reverb on the snare, we can actually do that now. That's easy to do. Not that synth though. I don't know. This one's fine, I guess. <laughs> no, no, no. Is it the quantizing? I feel like it sounds a little bit better when I play it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying, all right? I don't know, it, it's something, it's a little bit funky. It's it's 1% funkier than we had before. Let's crop to active take. I feel like I've probably come up with something better on bass guitar, but we're gonna move on. Let's add in another, another analog lab. Unfortunately for you, I have to play guitar now. And I'm going to use a bit of this pedal, Dr. Q. Seems appropriate. Okay, I'm going for like the thinnest pick I have.
Okay, it's it's something. It it's not great, but it'll work. <laughs> it gives us something that we can uh move on. I didn't expect to make like a funk track today, but here we are. I feel like it needs some like funky percussion or something. I actually wanted to um to play around with something that I saw done in Snap Heap by Dash Glitch. And I kind of wanted to recreate that sort of thing. So let's, we're going to uh, go on a adventure a little bit. Let's make a new track. I'm not gonna record into it. Actually going to get the Snap Heap and get a noise generator. Just use the one from Reaper. Let's just use the pink noise generator. Mute it for now. We're gonna do two parallel buses with the trance gate in each, and then get a delay of, I don't know, 18 milliseconds, let's say. 100% wet, and we'll collapse that. Does that make sense? And doing it this way, allows you to have ADSR on the on and off beats. Okay, and then overall EQ this a little bit, or a lot. Okay, that's not working with <laughs> with this. Uh, the reason you would normally tr trigger a MIDI note at the start of this instead of the noise generator is so that it actually follows playback. So that's what I should do. He used um, phase plant. So I'll use that just because I have it and I just need to put in a MIDI note. Oh, I bet that's what it was, 132nd. I want our 116. That's so much better already. So let's do a, a macro and we'll link the decay knob to this one. And macro two will link to this decay knob. Use the transient shaper. That's a little less harsh. And how is that with the drums? Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Okay, and then macro one can actually be modified by an LFO that is, that is changing, um, yeah, every 16. Doing that right. It's a pretty neat effect. Um, and the, the transgates can store eight different patterns. I think I want the the delay after. That's working better because it was just sustaining. It doesn't work with the instruments at all. At this stage, this sounds pretty cool. And 
you can just add in a little bit of uh, movement with the LFO on that macro. Okay, so we got some interesting stuff happening here. Let's try again adding in <laughs> instruments. So again, I'm gonna do um, Analog Lab. Let's find something that actually works with this. I think Snap Heap is not free, but the Snap Ins are free. I don't remember for sure. Uh, right now, just kind of randomly, so it makes me want to play something. We're in the uh, the lead synth category right now. I was actually thinking about this the other day. This has just a like a favorites, like a liked thing. So if I liked that one, I can like it. I can instantly jump to things that I've liked previously, but. I don't have a way of marking the ones that I absolutely hate as completely unusable. And so when I'm looking for a new sound, I still kind of have to go through everything at some point. The color things are just different things. They don't actually display in here as a, a, a new color. So I tag this one as red. You don't see it as red in here, but it will go to this page. So I was gonna do that with gray. I don't know if you can delete it. There's no way to delete the preset, as far as I can tell. Discover similar presets, that's interesting. Discover similar presets. No, that's not similar. cheeseburger menu. <laughs> when you're in this menu, you can't save it as a favorite. Maybe the tempo is just a little bit too fast. Let's do 105. Oh, but that messed everything up. So let's do, let's do position length and rate and do 105. I kind of like that. Let's, let's do that. It's not hard quantized. I can't deal with that. So let's do another analog lab. And this time. This might literally just be one note here. I think I need a pitch bend, but my pitch bend is broken on this keyboard. I probably can't modify portamento on this, can I? Or make it monophonic or anything like that.
Cool. What's next? Another analog lab, and I want some like synth strings. Actually, these ones, but maybe I'll go force myself to play octave higher. I don't know how to make that go away now. That's funny. Okay. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. If you want to be a channel member, you get some benefits like a thanks in every video. There, uh, there's a, a screen, the intro of every video that has a list of all patrons and channel members. And during the live streams, you get these special emoji things, reactions and access to any exclusive content that I have. So yeah, it's just five bucks and it's a great way to sponsor uh, as a, just a community member, sponsor the blog. Thank you very much. That's wrong. Thanks, Davi. So just to recap, this is a sponsored stream. It's sponsored by Prism Urban Legends, which is this contact instrument. And we are hearing one of the preset kits, which would be number nine, Smack. In terms of processing, everything's kind of stock. And I'm just got a bit of reverb on that snare. There's a bunch of different snare, or sorry, a bunch of different reverbs built in here. I think this one's probably my favorite. Lots of like interesting, weird abstract ones uh, that you wouldn't normally, wouldn't normally find in a drum kit. Yeah, lots of fun stuff with this one. All the other sounds are Analog Lab. I've got 70s movie anthem. I've got 60s string synths. I didn't mean to choose just numbers for everything. And then this one is Air String 2.
And then for percussion, we're using Snap Heap, generating a uh, like a percussion sound based on pink noise or white noise, one of them. Have we heard the modern pop kit yet? Prism Modern Pop? I mentioned it earlier, and if you know my intro music. So I made this one using Prism uh, Modern. So that one, that pack was all over that demo. Yeah, and I used that song for two years in the video intros, at least. Prism Retro demo, I... This one's Prism Retro. Seems a bit loud. I don't know why, but I, I'm soloing the drums and nothing solos, but okay. remember these other uh, this song very much
I don't remember making this, <laughs> but uh, it, the drums are all from the Prism Retropop library. All the synths, I think, are all from my Minilog XD. There may be some, yeah, there's some like cymbal crashes. But those are again from one of the Prism libraries. I like these like glitch effect sections. That's pretty fun. Yeah, you can't go wrong with DV's machines. It's great stuff, all of it. Okay. All right, so that was a pattern. Let's try another pattern. That's pretty cool. All right, so that's our next section. Okay. Uh, something like that. I think I got one loop. I think it just needs to be as simple as that. Just like, just that. So let's move that one there, this one there.
I don't want the clap in there every time. Actually, I don't want the clap in there any times. Let's try that. Tried recording with uh, quantizing on today, and then I think I get it, play it back, and it was different. So took that off and instantly started playing better. All right. Well, that's it for the stream this week. Thank you so much for coming to hang out. Thanks to AVA Music Group for sponsoring this stream. Their new Urban Legends Prism expansion is very cool. Thanks again to the new channel members and uh, just anyone in general that visited the stream. I appreciate you. This stream will be available at, for video on demand for the next week until the edited video comes out. Yeah, since it's a sponsored stream, I might be able to get someone from the community to edit this video. Thanks for coming, and I'll see you in the next video.